only one divinity, one consciousness underlying the whole creation from which everything has come. So that is what we call divine. But the divine has many, many different aspects or qualities and plays different roles. Like you are one person but for somebody you are the daughter, for someone you are the mother, for another you are the friend or the wife. Or if you are a man, you are the son, the husband, father, colleague, anything. So you play so many roles. And like that, um, the divine is playing so many different roles and has different names according to these roles. So divine as creator or creative intelligence is called Brahma. And the pure divine substance or the ocean of beings, or we can also uh, of being, or the we can also say the transcendence, that is called Brahman. Brahman, huh? the absolute. And our our inner nature, our soul, is part of this universal Brahman, of this divine consciousness. Now, <clears throat> that power which maintains the creation is called Vishnu. And Vishnu is also space. The whole creation and everything happens in space, the whole universe is in space. So that space is called Vishva, everything, Vishva. So Vishnu comes from that root, means Vishnu is space. And Shiva, as I said already, is transcendental, pure consciousness. And its nature is bliss. So bliss consciousness, that is called Shiva. And Shiva also plays different roles. For instance, uh, as the ancient father Time, he's called Kala Purusha. Kala Purusha, the Time, is one aspect of Shiva. So we have time and space, these two things already, no? and creative energy. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And then we have Ganesha, we chanted to Ganesha, right? Ganesha, you may have seen some statues of a god with an elephant head. <laughs> that symbolizes the invincible power of the divine, which is breaking through all the obstacles. Like the elephant is breaking through the jungle, yeah? walking through the jungle. Like that, um, there is some invincible power in creation, in nature, and also in you, in each one of you, which is going through all the obstacles and overcoming all the obstacles. Invincible. That is Ganesha, the lord of the obstacles. Gana means obstacle and Isha means lord. And one of his qualities is also humor. Well, that means with humor you can overcome obstacles and problems much easier. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <clears throat> so 
And then there's Devi. Devi means goddess or divine mother. So in the, in the Indian culture, the divine is not only male, it's also female, it's both aspects. So the whole Prakriti, the whole nature, everything which exists is part of nature. That is the Divine Mother. All the matter, the gross matter, the subtle matter, the whole universe is the body of the Divine Mother, of Devi. And then there are these other Divine Mothers or Devis. Lakshmi. Lakshmi is the goddess of beauty, good fortune, and wealth, abundance. <clears throat> so she is practically the finance minister of the <laughs> And then there's Saraswati. Saraswati is the wife of Brahma. And she is the goddess of knowledge, wisdom, of the Vedas, and of speech and of science and arts. So everything which has to do with speech, language, uh, art and science uh, is under is Saraswati's domain. So she is the education minister of the gods. <laughs> so if you are interested in learning anything, then Saraswati is the one to turn to. That's why in India all the children play, uh, pray to Saraswati to give them knowledge <clears throat> and make learning more easy. And then there's another force in nature which is also invincible and this force Force means Shakti in Sanskrit. So this Shakti is Durga, Durga Devi. Kali or Durga, these are two different names of her. Durga is that power of the absolute, of the pure consciousness, which destroys all negativity. So she is more powerful than all the Devas together. <laughs> There's the ancient stories in the Vedas, in the scriptures, that there were some powerful demons and, and all the gods together were fighting against the demons and couldn't conquer them. And they were in big trouble and then they prayed to the Divine Mother and said, please come and help us. And then out of the sacrificial fire rose the goddess Durga riding on a lion or a tiger having eight arms and in each hand a weapon and she defeated all these demons which which were so powerful so she is the all-powerful invincible force of consciousness and all of you have durga also inside you <clears throat> that quality when every time when you meditate and you go deep into meditation into transcendence you experience that quietness and silence. What happens? Some stress gets released, isn't it? Right? The stress gets released means the inner demons are coming out. They're coming to the surface and they are thrown out. And who is doing that? The quality of Durga Devi. So powerful. So the divine consciousness rises in you and destroys all negativity until one day there's no negative emotions left anymore. Finished, over. <laughs> no more fears, no more anger, no more depression. Everything thrown out by Durga Devi inside you. So we invoke that quality too. So she is the ministry of war. <laughs> or how do you call that? protection, no? The goddess of protection. We have uh, recorded one CD, Durga Mantras for Protection. Do you know that? Some of you know. <laughs> um, 
And then we sang tonight Govinda, Govinda, Gopala, right? Govinda is another name for Krishna. And Krishna is divine love. The principle of divine love. And he's often praised together with Radha. Radha is his female counterpart, Radha and Krishna. Krishna is love and Radha is longing. And that symbolizes that there can be no love without longing and no longing without love. They are like two sides of the same coin, love and longing. If you are longing for someone or something, it means that you love it. You know, love the person, right? So that is expressed as Radha and Krishna. Krishna is not only love. He is also joy and bliss and divine, very, very playful and sometimes a little bit mischievous. <laughs> Likes to pray, play tricks on others. <laughs> very, very playful. So all these are different divine qualities. And when we are chanting these names, we enliven these qualities in our own consciousness and also in the atmosphere, in the environment. That is why you feel that the energy is going high during satsang and that you feel like laughing and singing and dancing and having fun, you know, because the energy is going so high. <laughs> So it doesn't matter that you understand everything what we are singing in Sanskrit. It's not so important. Important is that you go into the feeling of it. 